it's it's we've probably seen cases of it in, in grocery stores near us or, or beer stores wherever but it's called not your father's root beer um, it tastes remarkably like root beer um, and the the stuff that they're sending from Wisconsin that that we're getting out here is the five point something percent I should I gotta pull that that label up because they make three different types of this root beer yeah, beer they make three, five like, point nine five nine five so nine. I, I had it um, up in it doesn't matter where but I had it up in up in Lincoln when all, all three of us uh, were up for the the beer fest up there and it tasted exactly like root beer but it tasted more like a root beer float it was kind of like it had a little bit of vanilla like a little bit more of a of like a sarsaparilla thing going on there you could tell it was definitely root beer but it was more of like a it, it was just remarkably like root beer I don't know what to say but uh, yeah if you handed that to somebody and said here enjoy my root beer they would believe you that it was root beer it's it's not one of those ones that just has a little flavor and kind of reminds you of root beer it is in my opinion if you gave it to somebody and they didn't know they would ha they would have no idea that it was technically uh, supposedly a beer yeah Sh uh, Sean your thoughts on that uh, it, it doesn't taste like a beer but in it you're spot on uh, uh, when when even having the first sip the, the uh, I'm immediately thinking of a companion uh, vanilla ice cream yeah 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 so you know, I mean it, it, it'd be great if you like to make root beer floats or... it. it's really good in a float oh yeah. really yeah I had it at the little tap house uh, up, <laughs> up in the uh, but, it, but that was when we could get it. Uh, right now, it, it kind of became an overnight kind of viral sensation, and now it's uh, it's actually a little bit hard to find around here until we get the next batch or shipment or whatnot. I kind of get a weird, and so for for my taste, and I bet it's probably the same for you guys. I can only probably have a half a pint, maybe a pint. Not, I mean, not a full six pack. That that is, it is super sweet. But I, yeah. I'm I'm just, I'm just not used to something so sweet because I haven't I've. I've had soda in a while, so that's a super that's sweet. The same way with regular root beer, though. Like, I'm not going to drink a six pack of regular root beer either. Yeah. That's maybe that's. No, it's it, it's true. I mean, I mean, it's it just it probably it's just so sweet. But the what was I going to say? Yeah. So, so the what is more interesting about this is not just the the kind of overnight success, as Carla was saying, but it kind of has that that to me it seemed like a four loco appear uh, appeal where you're. You're drinking something. I never had it, but you're you're drinking something so sweet that it kind of might mask the alcohol, and it you could you could definitely overdo it. But I, I think that sweetness is going to stop you from overdoing anything. Cause it is so sweet. But um, Sean, do you do you have any any thoughts on the kind of like you, you said it's, it doesn't even taste like a beer? Do you have a any problems with it kind of masking it being a beer at all? Well, you know, it comes in it comes in six packs, right? And um... Usually, if I'm gonna buy a six pack, it's like for me or somebody else, and I know I'm gonna have a couple in that. Uh, I feel that it would. I'm I'm not sure if I could if I could drink a full glass of it by itself, let alone yeah. the multiples within a six pack to finish a six pack. Uh, I I do know that I I mean I've been to a lot of stores that um and people just come in and they're like, do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have wow. it? And uh, so there's a high amount of demand for it, and a lot of people actually going into all sorts of different stores to find it. So there, there's even in like even in New Hampshire is where I experienced that uh, in the past uh, probably about two weeks. Um, I actually had it on draft when I was in Philly, and I didn't really understand the phenomenon around it, or maybe it hadn't started um, the phenomenon in our area at that time. Yeah, that was a, that was a month ago too. Jeez. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Um, We're getting all the stuff before it's cool, you know. <laughs> if I if I was um if I was a bar owner or bar manager, I would have caution about where I put it on draft. Um, I know. I mean, if I was a, a a local brewer, I would not want to have my IPA to go on the same line after Ooh, Not Your Father's Root Beer, because you can imagine that no no matter how much you clean it. That it'd be very difficult to get that uh, syrupy root beer out of the lines. Great so call. you probably get like a, a root beer IPA. Um, so if, if there is someone out there that wants, like, I mean, my advice would be if you're going to put it on, put it on where the line that you typically dedicate for a stout, and that uh, a stout will probably overpower it, or even a, a strong dark beer at that point. Can, can a brewer? request that it not be put on that sort of line or is that all the bars the bar owners call bar, bar really it's kind of what lines uh, open up gotcha 
I think yeah, yeah, I figured yeah. I mean, it, it obviously it would seem like it's uh, the bar's call, but yeah, coming from someone without experience, it, yeah, makes sense. But you know, I mean, in two months from now, if you go in and try your beer on draft, and you're like, oh, this kind of sounds a little, uh, tastes a little off, and yeah, what what could it be? Uh, oh, it's it tastes like sarsaparilla and uh, and root beer. <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, you know what was on that line beforehand. And, and I, I, you know, go ahead. Sorry. I guess. I was, I was gonna say, as a bar, as a bar manager, bar owner, you don't want to have to pay to have your lines replaced. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So the the thing that that has people, the thing that has me a little annoyed about this beer, is that it is technically, from what they're saying, a beer that it may have a hop or two in it, um, which means that everyone in the world is asking me, "Have you heard about this new beer that tastes like root beer?" Like, I I. It's one of those things that I feel like this fa- this belongs in the family of the malt beverage, you know, the the twisted tea, the Smirnoff yeah. ice, strawberry, lime marita. It has the novelty of being this weird other thing. So people are going nuts for it, um, which is not a you know fine, but literally it's the fastest growing beer SKU right now. Like it's, yeah. it's insane how much people want this. Um, and that goes to the the question too of you know how is this tiny tiny brewery you know picking up that demand and that's where you get into this weird um, that's mm. where you get to this weird land where the Boston Globe just wrote an article yes. um, you know and they were trying to figure out basically who's behind this you know this phenomenon that has literally exploded over the past couple of weeks um, it's not technically a flavored malt beverage technically it's a beer because it has hops in it apparently um, oh, so it was apparently, apparently. <laughs> so. So the thing is that the Boston Globe, um, you know, went and did some investigation and basically asked them, you know, how it's made and asked them where it came from. And the last paragraph of this article, which we'll link in the show notes, yeah, um, is, has the author saying, you know, he talked to, you know, the brewery, asked him all these questions, and then it says, a couple of days later, I discovered an LLC filing with the state of Illinois that lists small town brewing as part of an, of its part of innovation brewing which is a subsidiary of Fusion Products, makers of Four Loco. When I showed it to the PR company, they go silent for days and then finally back off their claims of independence, explaining that Small Town was recently acquired by Eugene Casper, owner of Pabst. So this is one of those things that's a little weird, like who owns this and did they just acquire it because it's so huge? Um, you know, so yeah. I don't know, thoughts on that? It'd be it'd be very interesting to get that timeline to 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 see when when they when they saw the skew go up and then how quick they were to if, if this was an acquisition yeah. like that. But my my extreme problem with it kind of lies deeper than that with the interview with with the brewer and and kind of his not so technical knowledge on kind of what is in the beer. So uh, as, as Carla was alluding to, it, t- it technically you know to become a beer, Rhein uh, the, the 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 German purity law. What you know, water, hops, yeast, malt. Hops is one of them. There's no Sean said it. There's no taste of hops in that beer. There isn't, not at all. Um, but in this interview, um, he it says uh, the Gary Gary Zen from Boston Globe says it's a beer, right? There must be hops in it. Uh, and then the the brewer says it has floral hops in it, a very small amount. Um, and when he asked what kind of hops, he kind of paused a little bit and then said said a couple hop names. But it, my 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 question is: Was it too easy for Paps to acquire this brewery? If 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 there's a brewer that's so non-technical with the terms, and then he also mentioned that his brewers are part time, which kind of made me think like, what's really going on behind this <laughs> this thing here? Thoughts on that, Shano? Uh, I've read other other articles, and it's been well known that um, uh, Paps has a connection with it, especially through the supply chain yeah. area. Uh, meaning that they do have some ownership of distribution rights around the project. Uh, I do think it's a little fishy about how um, the project got started. Um, and I think I think over a couple more weeks, I'm sure that'll be flushed out of of what the full like story of it is. Uh, just just continuing on on that in once in one uh, in the same thing idea of as a, of a root beer beer. You guys may or may not remember. Um, I think it was year number two of North Shore Beer Week. Uh, we did a collaboration with um, Cape Ann Brewing in Gloucester, and we made a root down, root down brown ale. Ooh. We basically made a brown ale with 
um, the same spices that you would have in a root beer. So it was actually beer brewed as a root beer with root beer spices into it and that we used uh, for North Shore Beer Week. So that was a, a, a collaboration with uh, TJ Peckham um, when and we brewed it at the, as a batch at the brewery. So that was pretty fun. But yeah. that was a legit beer base. Yeah. It didn't taste as sweet. It actually, it would taste like, wait, it's beer. And I could taste it. It has star anise in it. Licorice okay. and, other, yeah. and other ingredients. Yes, I mean, but the, and then that's that's coming from obviously you and, and, and TJ knowing knowing the base of beer, and, and so it, it, the the question is still unclear. Were they just trying to make money and pull a fast one? But uh, I guess what we might never know. But what, I think once this, once this blows up and we see a commercial on TV, now we're going to start <laughs> seeing some weird things going on. I mean, the the real question is, is like, you know, I mean or the, the solution, take a video of their brewing process. Are they actually mashing in with uh, milled grain, or are they using uh, a sugar extract to just that that's maybe even malt extract, but just a sugar as if you would be creating uh, root beer? They're, they're just standing over the, the kettle with a couple of cans of Barks and, and all that and just, <laughs> just shaking exactly. the kettle. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, and it, 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 it is worth mentioning that uh, – there are two other, so the ones that's nat kind of natural, ugh, nationally uh, distributed is the 5.9%, but locally on draft they have the 10.7% and the 19.5%, which to me sounds like root beer schnapps, which I've had and turns out into one of those nights. That's It's just no good for anybody. But I wonder what the 19.5, because my, my guess is the 10% tastes less sweet, but the 19.5 is like, yo, it's like enamel stripping sweet. But I have, I have no idea. I could imagine it would taste at that point maybe like a bourbon, like how yeah. uh, Utopia does. Yep, that'd be that'd be. I guess it depends crazy. how it's aged. Yeah, it's it, it's aged in a in a it's aged in an A and W bottle and then poured into a Barks can, and then just shaken up. But uh, Carla, final thoughts on this before we we hop on to something uh, more exciting. I mean, more more I beer related. Know. Yeah, more beer. <laughs> yes. I just wrote an article about how you know there's a ton of choices for very hoppy things in our beer market right now, and yeah. and I just want people to think about you know is this a reaction to that? Are there do there need to be more entry level you know sweeter things going on in beer, and is that why that's this is taking off? I I think it's reflective of a bigger need to let people into this kind of um, industry in, in more avenues. So, you know, whereas this is going to be one of those things, it's going to get popular, it's going to be there, and I think it's going to stick around, kind of like Shmirnoff Ice and Twisted Tea is going to stick around, but, um, you know, but what's the actual, what's the driver of this? Who, yeah. who wants it and, and why? Um, and I think these are questions that, that brewers need to think about. Yeah, and it, it is in no way a gateway beer to anything that we know and have talked about for the past 114 episodes. Like there, there's, there's not a chance you can taste this and be like, I might like beer because if you like that, there's a good chance you're not gonna find a beer that you like. I mean, you, you might like it as a beer lover, but if you're new to craft beer, not a chance. Like, there's no beer in the world that tastes like that because it's not a beer. Now, Brian, uh, for other breweries out there, would yes. you recommend anyone to get into this category? I'm not a big imitation game fan. Uh, obviously, you know, Im uh, imitation is the, the, was it the best form of flattery, but I, I don't think so. And I think if we do see imitation of this beer, it'll be, you know, just a gimmick from, from somebody else. I, I, I think I think brewers are smarter than that, than to do this because it, it usually goes the other way, right? With the Super Bowl commercial, uh, you see the, the pumpkin peach, they, they start mocking us or, that, or the brewers. So I, I don't think it works the other way. I don't think we'll we'll do it, but... What do you think? I would I would advise against it unless they wanted to make a root beer. Very true. Hey, and there's some great there's some great breweries that make their own root beer. Uh, Woodstock is one of them. Um, and heck, even breweries up in uh, uh, breweries make their own soda, such as Four Quarters in uh, Burlington. Or, uh, or Mercury. Yeah. yeah. Switch Brewing Company. So go go is that there, route and, and don't even. Captain Eli sodas. Yeah. 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 So yeah, great question, Sean. But I, I hope not. But just like I said, we, we, we might. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe maybe Lagunitas has made something because they, they seem to like explode on Twitter every five months or something. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs>